Sierpinski's triangle is arguably one of the most fascinating fractals in all mathematics. And I know you've probably heard that around before and seen it on t-shirts and merch and whatnot. But I'm going to try and convince you that this stuff is actually as mad as it seems. Sierpinski's triangle is simply a fractal that looks like this. It's a triangle with a triangle facing the other side in it, and this is repeated for all sub-triangles infinitely. Let's start with a small exercise. Something we learn about in school when we study the binomial theorem or combinatorics is the Pascal's triangle. It's a shape that's a little like this. You start with three ones in a triangle, then you add pairs until you can find a number that goes in between two numbers, making each line longer by one position. Let's try that out for the first two, three lines. One and one make two, two and one make three, and we fill that up on the other side as well. And so on. You can stare at this figure to look for patterns and stay busy for a very, very long time. But the pattern I want to bring to your attention is what happens when you mark out all the even numbers with a circle. You'll find that it makes a pattern a little like this. And there you have it, that's the Sierpinski's triangle. Yes, I know, totally felt that shook. The focus of my video though is on another spooky way that the triangle is found which I found fairly recently and I'm still recovering from how cool it is. The chaos game. Let's start with three points on the vertices of the largest triangle ABC. Pick a random point within the triangle formed by ABC and draw a point halfway between the chosen point and any one of the vertices. Repeat this process from the current point to any other randomly chosen vertex and do this many many times. Okay, I'm not very fast with this, so I'm going to write some code to animate it. The technical term for the process we follow to reach this is called a chaos game. And the Sierpinski's triangle is called the strange attractor for this chaos game. Let's play this again in slow-mo. to believe that this actually happens. I'm going to make a code long video soon so you can try to code this simulation yourself and right now I'm going to give you some more intuition as to how this would ever work. Here's something you can try out yourself with a piece of paper at home for some intuition. Draw out a Sierpinski's triangle. Now choose a point that is part of the triangle and play one step of the chaos game. If you do it correctly, the new point will end up in a similar location on a smaller triangle near the corner. If you pick a point on the Sierpinski's triangle and play the chaos game, you'll only end up on points that are a part of the Sierpinski's triangle. Of course, the game doesn't necessarily start on the Sierpinski's triangle. It could start on a point that isn't part of it. However, imagine your starting point is somewhere inside the big white space in the middle of the Sierpinski's triangle. Now play the chaos game once. Where do you end up? You end up inside the white space on a smaller copy of the Sierpinski's triangle. Your new point is now closer to touching the Sierpinski's triangle than it was before. This is also true for when you start from outside of the triangle. I coded an interactive simulation and it's available on my GitHub, the link to which is in the description below. Um, so you can choose the coordinates of the triangle as well as the starting position of the chaos game. And there you have it, another simple thing to increase your fascination for the world of math. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share.